Thank you, sir. I'm meeting you and I'm happy meeting you. <laughs> and we also want to welcome Assistant Chief Monitoring Officer, NBC, Mohammed Koro Sharifat. Mohammed Koro Sharifat. Let's get that together for So now I have an idea of those who are monitoring me. I mean, I'm beginning to have, I'm putting a face to, so when I speak, I'll begin to visualize the person that is listening to me. All right, uh, thank you very much. I also, also invite right here the, the man who is representing the media partners for this event, this particular event. He's my own boss. Please welcome. He's the general manager of operations of Splash FM and Langley FM, Mr. Tony Olamu. Thank you. Now, as I said, quickly let's do this because we want to be done with this in a jiffy. We'd like to have to meet our, each other, so to introduce yourself. I'll start the microphone from this side, from this one of you in that read. What we want to hear from you is your name and your medium. Please don't drop your CV. Thank you. I'm Hannah Gilden. I work with Royal Roads Academy. Yeah, this is your father, Royal Roads, my student. Hola, Peter B. This is Oasis. I'm Peter B. 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 Thank you. 
this um, year's edition is really beaming a searchlight on this team for the sixth edition. Yes, this is the sixth edition. That is sixth in 12 years. It's a biannual media forum. Um, we the which GM of uh, how to is there. We've had this together, several faces there. We've had the uh, of course, I've seen some new faces. I've seen um, um, what's it called now, TD and my colleagues from um, Splash FM and every other station. Uh, I want to welcome you. Why the heck did the emission the broadcast media stakeholders forum? And of course, um, how far have we gone? What have we done in the past? I think, uh, just like uh, Shion said, it's important. I show more light for the, for the benefit of the press and for the benefit of uh, uh, those that are coming for the first time to this kind of gathering. Uh, well, I am an independent broadcaster, an independent uh, content provider. That's what I've been several years. Um, to be precise, I started 29 years ago with the OGBC. I was very small then. I'm still small. I started very heavy. And um, yes, I was in the university in 1990 through 94, 95. And um, as a student, I was a broadcaster. So I, 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 I can say I, 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 I do it broadcasting, you know. So when there was a point, at a point we felt the content we have should be of quality. The National Broadcasting Commission have been doing wonderfully well in synthesizing the, the, the airwaves and seeing to uh, quality content being produced by all broadcasters, whether you are a permanent staff, a freelance artist, independent producer, whatever, as long as you are one of us, it's um, very important that you don't, according to the Nigerian Broadcasting Code, deprive the public of quality content, quality production. And um, it got to a point where what we had on air, some of uh, our guys, one of them is actually here, there is two who just retired to the fire from the B-Swiss. Welcome, sir. It got to a point when a lot of us were getting worried because we had all commerce in the industry. Everybody wanted to be a broadcaster. By trading, what I was um, introduced to when I started was Torah trading by the late Toba Wale uh, of the OGBC. And of course, in those days, there is no way to talk on any radio station without being trained. Um, there's what we call conditioning, there's what we call voice training, there's what we call voice modulation, there's what we call breath, breath holding capacity of an individual, which is, uh, you know, uh, which differs from what I can hold to what you can hold. And there's what we call, the, um, what's it called now? Um, your strength in music, musical chit chat, um, different kind of programs. It is not everyone that can read the news in those days. News is sacred. Those were the things we were afraid with. Those were the things I was, you know, seeing when I was coming up as a broad, as a young broadcast, broadcaster. And I was privy to the fact that um, what obtains in OGBC and not obtain at the BCOS because there's in-house time of every station. Every station had a character. But whatever it is, it's your character and your station. What is important is professionalism. That was what we were trained with. And that was what I knew. And um, at the OGBC then, whether you are a freelance Stylus, what we put on that uh, uh, this record six minutes, uh, nine minutes, three minutes, 
whatever it is, whatever you want to, you want to produce a program for 48 hours, the script is ready, the musical compilation, the law is there. I don't think the station wants to use law in any way now. So you, the law is there, you submit your law to your producer for 48 hours, they approve whatever it is, your focus for that program, you submit your synopsis, you submit your focus, your focus, your focus you do your research, you go to the library, you compile your music, your music synchronizes with whatever you want to do, you do your first pop, you go out and get, you know, at, on, on, on site. And I was listening to, to a program, I won't mention that station, but not in the battle. And um, the presenter was like, or she should make the lava song alone. Especially our time she will be back from the party for her. Or she should make the lava song alone. Or she should make the home banana also. More dress and do. Oh, so on her. And I slammed my brake. I thought something left me. Left me. <laughs> and she should make it, you know, in that very law, said it that way. And he was talking about this, she should come back also on radio for 30 minutes and the producer of that program was there because he was saying to me that me who can live there who can show me show me show me show me listen he may want to produce that show and the GM of that station if he's listening or she was listening to that station I don't know and you listen to that kind of presentation and um, a lot of people were pointing fingers like these finance independent broadcasters are not do people, not do well people, they are not trained. Um, even the permanent staffs to stations don't want to employ professionals, they want uh, uh, they want hot corners, cheap labor, and uh, you know, say okay, they will, they will learn on the you know, they will learn on the job. I say come and do this and uh, read the news. And the news that is sacred, as uh, I was told, I was uh, taught, there is no more sacred and um, you listen to news, they water it down. They just, you know, and I was like, okay, will this continue? If this is my profession, if this is what I've been trained with, or if this is training I've gone through, and uh, the profession is becoming something else, we should come alive to our responsibilities as uh, gatekeepers of the society, as opinion holders. And the society we are the mirror. Whatever it is heard on radio or TV should be authentic. I was told that when you are in doubt, you give out. When you don't know, you ask. You don't modern names, you don't pronounce. I want to say Koro. Even the Koro I'm saying, is it Koro or Koro or Koro? You know, you don't mispronounce names. These are, um, uh, shall I call it, sins that were not forgiven in those days. A lot of broadcasters have lost their jobs because they mispronounce, especially in news, they mispronounce news. And you don't ask anymore, you don't ask questions. There is a lacuna, and the NBC is not sleeping. They are always like, now we began to see NBC as our enemy. We began to see them as, well, I want to call you, you know, they get to focus on that, they get to focus on that. When you get NBC, you say, ah. Want to deal with me, not to pay the right. And we come to think of it and like, okay, what is the problem? What are the rules of NBC? What are they to do? They have to regulate. They have the legal power to sanction. It is legal. They can tell that station, yank this program off. Okay, if your program is yanked off, is it about you or your content? Why are we not seeing NBC as our enemy? And they don't want us to jail. They want to send us away from whatever we do that gives us money. We know ourselves, we know how we make money, even without saying we are making money. If we want to make money, that's very smart. But are you smart at the expense of professionalism? Are you smart at the expense of quality content? Now, why are you seeing NBC as? Why are we seeing NBC as our enemy? And I said, okay. We cannot fold our arms and leave the job to NBC. NBC to our broadcasters. A lot of them have been on the job for several years before.
of us. NBC are broadcasters too. So, so let me approach them and discuss my personal concern as a professional broadcaster. I am concerned about the content, I'm concerned about the quality of our content, I'm concerned about so many things that were ills on air. And I approached the NBC, uh, that was about 13 years ago. And um, uh, I said, I'm concerned. I, I want to partner with you to, you know, help uh, satisfy them. He said, Mrs. Bumiko said, I don't want you to know me. I want you to let me know she wants to know me. I want to know she wants to know me. I want to know she wants to know We want to satisfy the hair, airwaves, we want to join with you and um, see as much as we can, you know, help sanitize. Because if we don't do it now, the next generation will never forgive us. The, old, the older generations take it very right. They said, okay, this is the next one, you are the next generation. Should we fold our hands and see our profession? It's not our profession, it's our life being, you know, played down downgraded and uh, put into the mud because of the uh, personal personal gain or interest or selfish interest so to speak. And the woman said NBC had never for once partnered with an individual. It's not possible. I said they can't try to this is what I have. Their background check and all that and sincerely they saw the society in what I had. And of course, I had a lot of uh, confrontations. I was telling you said, when we started there, I had a lot of confrontations. A lot of people were like, uh, so fed by the one, to love and to fetch you and sit down. He here gone. He they gone. And he won't hear. She won't complain. I mean, of course, it's expected. When you say what we are doing is wrong, let us talk. A lot of people would want to say, who are you? What is your interest? Why are you? She was the NBC. But uh, we thank God, the NBC approved it. And uh, the first, the second, the, the third, the fourth, the fifth, this is the sixth edition. <laughs> and let me quickly just mention what we did in the, in, in the, in the next five, ten minutes. I'll, I'll, I conclude. I, I remember that um, at the first um, edition, we actually, the team was uh, quality content production and challenges. Quality content production and challenges. I think what actually brought that was, yes, why we had that uh, partnership. That we wanted professionalism. We wanted quality content. We wanted um, the airwaves to be sanitized. We wanted to you know, awaken our consciousness as broadcasters, as um, a gatekeepers in the society, as a mirror. We wanted to be alive to our responsibilities, and we need to, you know, bring it home that um, our content must be of course, even if you are, whether you call yourself a freelance presenter or a permanent staff, um, an independent producer. The fact is that as long as you are broadcasting, it is about what goes on that hair has to be of quality. We move from there to balancing, and that's where we have a problem, balancing professionalism and commercialization in a digital era. I wanted to make, I want to make money and I want to be professional. Sometimes, especially the independent producers, I wanted to be professional, but I need money. I need to pay for my school fees of my kids. I want to pay for the hair time. I want to pay for my staff, if you have. I want, to, I I want to, you know, do my logistics and all that. But the code says you cannot hide. The code says you cannot use, we had a problem where the code says the mission day, you cannot use your voice on Jingle and play it on your program. On your own program. The code says that. Okay, if I have to give my my, my, my Jingle to Fidabi to produce for me, I have to give Fidabi money. Yes, okay. You know, that's the truth. Yes. Okay, now, who is the voice of artists? That's another question. Must all broadcasters voice jingles? No. 
Okay, the God says the newscaster voice should not be heard on some kind of some any jingle, any commercial. But now I want to make money. I want to my my station is not paying me as much as um, the economy of Nigeria is bad. Yes. But I want to make money. But the the court is restricting me that I should not, you know, uh, my my voice should not be heard on big on, on any commercial. So how do I balance that? So how do I attract? How do I make my content attract commercials without my voice in those commercials? How do I up, upgrade or heighten or heighten my content to attract commercials without me voicing those commercials? How do I make my belt a prime time so that um, the commercials will come naturally? We have competition in Ibadan. We have about 20 something stations now, radio stations. Well, in those days, we had just Miss West Radio Nigeria. Am I right? Yes, NTA, I mean, and Galaxy 4. Then, 12 years ago, Splash came on board as the first private station. That was when we had the first uh, NBC television team, and Baba Akonde, and Yoga Patefon. Sorry if I'm sounding this way. Baba Akonde was the man that, that hosted the, he, was, he played those to us for the press conference. And he gave us dinner and he, he backbroke some of what we did at the NBC Yabisho Day, fourth edition. And he was the chairman of that location, which gave us hope that we can go further and do more. Please let's appreciate Baba Kondi. <laughs> so Slash FM came when NBC Yabisho Day was starting. And Baba Kondi really you know, embraced it and he supported us so greatly. Now, I want to make money. I want to be professional. They call me for Abi, Korema, Lolie, Maule, Masori, Nikyo, 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 So, I, I have to be truthful here. I was part of the broadcasters that was you know, producing jingles. Like, you heard my voice everywhere. Those days. Especially the film, home video, you know, and all that, and all that. I was producing, so, and I was anchoring, you know, program for the Marketers in Akure, Kiti, Oshun, uh, I don't know who the guy is there, you will remember that. And I was acquiring those programs to cast, you know. And um, uh, <laughs> so I had to, I mean, we shared this commission there, so I had to drop it. So I had to drop voice and I had to make those sacrifices and say, okay, let the Vidabis, the past, let them start producing jingles. And then uh, I pay them. But that's one money if I have the producer jingles for me. Now, how do we balance professionalism and commercialization? How do we 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 we, we hold stations when we buy their time? Not we start to do. some independent producers will hold your station. Yes. It is not every time we pay 13 weeks up front. It's not easy, it's not possible. You pay every time 13 weeks. You want to get from Koro and get from Atman and put his money together and pay him out to and still stay your own back profit and you want to pay your students to fees and then NBC is saying don't hide and you don't want to hide and the, the producer or the customer or your client is saying <laughs> you understand? And one of us, those years when we were starting, I don't want to mention any name for that, but when I say now, you know it. One of us said, Oh, hello, Obi, come. I won't mention the name of you. And he said, Ah, Obi, you do. Ah. Obi, pure water. Showman, do. <laughs> so that is to tell you how far we want to, we want to make money, we want to impress the customer. And we are doing it, I mean, is it justice to the general public? Because we are actually breaking to their privacy. If they have the time to listen to us, we should appreciate them. But what we are giving them is not of quality. And we are not professional. Oh, me, you do. So we do nothing more than me. I've been natural water. You want to hide that uh, you will lay a little lady. Endorsement. <laughs> At the point, we, I, I, I started realizing we are playing a session for me to. I said you should move this thing now. It's because I'm aware that if their neighbor is here, I'm advertising them. Branding. 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 
So, but those DMs, we, were, we want to say it and do all that. But we are being as a sheep. My one would my boy say, Oh, me, you can't have a team on your team. On my program. That was the problem of independent broadcasting. Broadcasting as a tool for language development in the digital era. Language, our language, our choice of words. There's a, there's a whole lot of importance in language when you are a broadcaster. The language of the beer panel is not the language of what you do on air. So many of us, especially the younger generations, would come on air and be talking as if they are in um, Agadabu, eating a uh, onion, and they'll be talking as if they are on beer in the morning, on an early morning program. So the choice of words, the language of broadcasting is not the language of the streets. It's not the language of uh, the, the garage. So we needed to awaken ourselves, our consciousness. Um, sustainability of broadcast ethics. That's the quote. That means let us adhere to this code so that we can have peace, so that we can have um, um, a, a, a sanitized um, airwaves, so that the public would enjoy us. Now, whether you like it or not, the public are the decider. If you are doing rubbish, you tune to another station. If they listen to XY station and what it's doing is wrong, it's not, it's not safe, they tune to another station. You can't force yourself on them anymore. You know, and um, quality content in the digital era, you know we are talking about digitization, is here now. A regulator's perspective. These are some of the issues which are called, which are acted as a call to order to us as gatekeepers. And I want to say to the glory of God that uh, a lot of us, a whole lot of us, are more aware now. The moment we finish this edition, by the following year, then we go for Africa. My colleagues will ask me, when is the next one? I said, uh, well, it's not every year. That's to tell you that uh, it is not just coming to the fore. It is about enlightenment. It is about uh, gaining more knowledge. It's about experience. It's about uh, getting more professional. It's about uh, adding to what we should have as broadcasters, adding to our knowledge, adding to our kitchen, what we should have as professionals. And uh, I want to say thank you very much for your support so far. I want to say thank you very much for your support for this year. I want to appreciate every other station too. I've had a lot of jingles here and there uh, who believe in this cause. It is not about the mission, it is about us, it is about profession. It is about our life. It is about what we believe in. It is what we do. The initial day will come and go, but the profession will be there for life. But whatever we do is an impact. It will still tell a lot of stories about what have you done, human development capacity in your, in your field. What have you done? So this is why we have the NBC Emission Day Broadcast Media Stakeholders Forum. It is a gathering where we come together to learn more to acquire more knowledge, to break strong, to be more professional, so that we go back home and have a rethink and uh, we reapproach what we do on air. And of course, to me, as a person, as a broadcaster, as a professional, the NBC Emission the Broadcast with the Broadcast Forum has helped me a great lot to actually be more alive to my responsibilities. And of course, I want to believe it has done the same to a whole lot of us there. Thank you very much for your attention and of course, and thank you for giving us your time and your hair wings free of charge because no station collected any time from me. I want to say thank you very much. Thank you. Salut, well, please appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Ah, one more on you. If I didn't stand up, I don't think you would have stopped. I'll be and I have to stand up. Uh, one that he said that really affected me, and uh, so we we'll talk about it is, you know, when you say newscasters, I'm a newscaster, I read news, I mean, that's my first love. She won't do voice over, you know, some people will come to you and say, she will voice it, they will come to me, she came I want to hear you voice this for me. And I'll say, NBC, NBC, you know, can you do something for us? We are hungry, you know, we are making us hungry. Like what we have said, you know, sometimes you look at the good morning and most of us, you know, you get a very good morning, make a lot of money.
voice of the thing. And I had to test the one that really paid me. You know, because they were going to, he was in JC and they were bringing you to my station. And I told me, I was told that I was more than my salary. You know, so, I mean, the fee was more than my salary. And I was going to make that in less than 20 minutes. I'm just getting to the studio and get out. That's why I help the cats. I help people like Atlanti, you know, and I did those things like that. Every single one will catch it, you know, but here I can't. I cannot, I mean, so. But I hope that the... They don't read the news. Uh, mine is registered. Once I get to the air, they know that that's the real action. But I think we need to learn a lot about, about these issues. Now, we want to hear from the NBC uh, Zona Director to hear what this year him is about social media evolution and conventional broadcasting the Nigerian perspective. Now there's something about social media now that all of us should be very much aware of. Social media has moved away from platform for just socialization, showing your pictures and the rest. It's becoming a force. Do you agree with me on that? The social media is becoming a huge force you know, to entrench something in society. It's becoming a force that is pushing the government to react. Government has to now react to issues coming from the social media. And so, are we using the social media properly, you know, rightly? But before I bring him on, I'd like to welcome very specially one of our bosses around here. Like you heard him say, he has retired to the fire. I'd like to welcome Mr. Larry Shitu to, to this program. Welcome, sir. Me do, me do. Yes. I've also seen someone who has also impacted a number of us who have gone through the Ivory Towers. Uh, when you talk about public speaking, when you talk about media training, when you talk about doing the job right, you know, I'd like to give it to him. I have a lecturer right at the back there, Mr. PC Crown. Dr. PC Crown, thank you for coming. Thank you very much, sir, for coming. He's, he's always been a great partner right here. Okay, so let's listen to the Zona director. He's been here um, and trying to be part of it. So let's listen to him. He's going to tell us about this year's event, Mr. Raphael Ackman, the Zona director, NBC. Rather, 
you have them. We have people who can conceptualize ideas, put them together, produce programs, and the programs will be accepted by everyone. We still have them today. We have the, the work, uh -huh. super story, metaphor. So we have people who can do that. It is a challenge, it's an awareness call that we should not limit our source or sources of information to the social media. We call it citizens content, uh, uh, what we call it, citizen content, kind of. Now, if you take content from the social media, there are two possibilities. One, the content will be authentic, and it will be the other way around. Now, we've been having issues of fake news, hate speech, dangerous speech. And most of these things are from the social media. And we believe this forum will give us an opportunity to rob minds, to talk about how do we, uh, you know, use the social media, because it's there to stay. Social media is not a bad thing at all. Like the MC said, it's a force to reckon with. They force the, 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 even the government to do the right thing at times. However, in this our profession, we have to be very careful. From the good side, fine, but there are a lot of bad ones too on that social media. And if you don't know which source, you are picking your information or news from, please, it is advisable to leave it out. If you are in doubt, leave it out. So that it won't cause a problem that, at the end of the day, you will now look at yourself and say, why have I, have I known this? Well, I, I won't, I, I'm not going to say anything about um, the, the papers that are going to be presented, I will just tell you that we have some papers that are lined up for the event. Uh, to set the tone of that day, it's no one else but the Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission, Malam Ishak Modibokao, who is going to talk on the social media evolution and conventional broadcasting in Nigerian perspective. He's going to set the tone for other papers presenters and of course the discussants to uh, leverage on. We're going to have papers like the influence of social media on broadcast content by one of our own, a prof, Professor Ayubani of Jebody. We're going to have a paper uh, which will interest you, digital marketing and the independent producer challenges and opportunities going to be presented by Tolu Oluo, a coordinator of BRIBJA. So he's a coordinator. I, I believe it's, it's, he's a blogger. Okay, good. So he, he has, he knows from his own experience, he's coming to present a paper and he will be able to at least guide us on how we can make money as well and at the same time be professional in what we do. Then the, the last paper for the day will be presented by uh, the director, my own director, director of broadcast uh, monitoring of the National Broadcasting Commission, and the topic is social media and its negative effects on broadcasting, the regulator's perspective. Then we line up some veterans, even some active um, professionals, broadcasters, to discuss each of this paper. So we are going to have a robust kind of um, forum where ideas will be shared, where you will have the opportunity to ask questions that will help you in uh, putting your content together 
uh, as the time goes on. But I want to also say that in NBC, we are not monsters. We are your friends. It is only uh, where the admin officer is not doing well that you always like him or her. I believe in the organization you have people that are in admin. And these are the ones that issue queries. Uh -huh. Most of most of you don't like them. So why? Because they issue queries. But if your admin is not issuing you queries, that means it's not doing what it ought to uh, be doing. So please, the NPC, we are here, we are partners in progress. And that is why this NPC and we have shown this uh, forum has been in existence for the past 12 years. And I'm very sure that it's not going to stop. It will be a continuous thing. Because every director general that comes in embraces it. Because it is uh, a forum where we can hear from the operatives themselves. The mission day is, like you said, he was a freelancer and probably is still one. So we want to know from his own experience so that when NBC wants to come in and say, okay, this and that and the rules, we also have this empathy that, okay, we can look at it this other way. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the essence of our, of our, our press conference here today. And for the forthcoming NBC emission days, uh, Forum, which is the sixth edition, we want to um, invite you, invite your friends. Let's come together. Let's rub mind. Let's talk. Let's ask questions. People are there to respond to those uh, questions. Remember, you can content users generated content is not prohibited. Users generated content is not prohibited. It's a, it's a beneficial thing to the broadcasters. However, the broadcasters will be held responsible for any faults in the content. In other words, what we are saying is that the broadcasters now have to be conscious of whatever content they are taking from the social media or they are taken from anyone, from the citizens. I would like to, to rest my, I would say case now, <laughs> my views here. <laughs> uh, and I know that it is indeed very important for us to note that in this profession, we shouldn't allow our clients to dictate to us. In the medical profession, I don't think you will go to the doctor and say, doctor, I have a day. please give me this. You don't prescribe the drug to yourself. For the legal profession as well, they have their rules. You can't dictate to them. So broadcasters, why do we allow our clients to dictate to us? We have the ethics of our profession. The MC said he has good voice. Fine, beautiful. But it has this flair for news. Great. When you start casting news, you personify the sacredness of news. Anyone that sees you knows that, oh, this is a very serious person. Because news is serious. News is factual. We believe you. If you say good morning, I don't need to run outside to see if it's indeed morning. I believe you, hook, line, and sinker. That is the power you carry. Now, can you now start sit and say this water has a very sweet taste? No, you see, when we allow money to rule us, we end up jettisoning professionalism. Very true. And that was the essence of the second, I think it was the second, balancing professionalism and commercialization. We need it. There are ways you can do it. It's either you abandon your newscasting and go to voicing, 
voice over. You make your money. Nobody, but you cannot do this with the two. It's not. It's not allowed. Because once I hear your name, I say, oh, this man, your voice, you, you read the news every day at the top of the hours. I listen to you. Your name now, I mean, your voice is registered in my subconsciousness. So immediately I see you advertising a product. I say, wow, I'll believe this man. Why? Because he, on the news, he will not lie to me. If he says the president is coming tomorrow, by tomorrow the president will be in Nigeria. Yeah. I mean, will be here in your in in your state. Except something else happens, and he will come back and tell us, oh, the president cannot make it. That is the fact, that is the sacredness that the newscaster carries. So it's a lot of responsibilities on us. Again, I want to also tell you that as a newscaster, your personality is an open check. Yes, you may not know. If you are just if, if you if you believe you are not making money, look at you see? But there are a lot of people who don't even have that food to eat. You understand? So you carry if you go out and people, particularly on the TV, you are a newscaster, people know you. You get to the bank, even the bank manager will want to attend to you first. Those are the things you enjoy. Honestly, your name open doors. For example, if somebody walks in today and says, My name is Siristoba, you look at him again. Oh, this is Siristoba. Everybody will want to embrace him. Why? Is he going to give you money? No. But because he has already made name from what he has been doing. So it's not about money alone, it's about your integrity, it's about who you are. You make name for yourself and you stand by it. So I want to thank you all for, for this time. You see, the left of the with me and ended on my head. Thank you, sir. All right, it's time for questions and answers. Uh, let's begin to take the question. But please, your question should not be sampled. Nigerians like to you know, try to tell stories before they ask the question. So let's have a question, the name, the video, and then your question. Yes. Any question? Journalists, you ask questions. Okay. I want to sincerely appreciate the stakeholders that are seated here including those of us who are beneficiaries of this particular press conference. I will try to summarize my questions, even though I had the intention to ask two questions, but I'll be very brief. It is very clear, Chairman, you mentioned that maybe you will react to this question. I want your attention. It is clear that you have passion for trading. Maybe that was the reason that you were attracted to a joint partnership with NBC. To not be a glory, we are all sitting down here at this very big edifice, Yemisho the Media House. I want to ask, what are your plans? to sustain trading in this particular radio station. And in addition to that, I observe that since you started this particular uh, MBC Emission Day Partnership, we stakeholders, those of us that are beneficiaries, we don't pay a dime. I want to wonder how you have been sustaining this program I know you enjoy minimum adverts, but uh, as part of your plans for Yemishon Day Media House, maybe there should be trade school. Or uh, what do you have to say on this? And for our, our guy, I usually say that in Yoruba, we pay to go to but I want 
to ask the representative of the NPC here, she said, when I was still in government service, that you are always very harsh with those of us that are broadcasters working in government media houses. But for private, I rest, this is my case or my views. Let the last person hang Yes. I mean, one more post. Or that will be able to read. Any other question? Let's take two, three more, and then we'll call it. Uh, any other question? Let's have a question. This is the details of the speech that is not really special here. What form is it going to take? Which day and day? Uh, details. All right. We have that. I'd like to invite to the east side of the aisle right now uh, the GMD Katawa Properties, who has been a great supporter of the convener and this industry. <laughs> Engineer Taiwo Kanye. Please appreciate you and thank you for Now, uh, this forum, I know I have 
always known this since you started. But I've always wondered uh, because with the advent of so many radio stations in impact no, today, uh, is this not uh, its ideal is affecting so many people in what way? Uh, the training, the culture, the ethics for some of us, whatever we learned while growing up in the business scene, the likes of you, Fermi, Larry, and everybody, it's no more there. And uh, once you're, you graduated and you can speak a little bit of good English, you are behind the microphone. And this, I feel, what's the mission day? Uh, what are you doing when it comes to training? Because I know the likes of us, we been tutored uh, by you. NBC, uh, sir, we have about 26 stations here in the Bible, and everybody's fighting for just one thing, same audience. Is this helping for the environment? That content, is it not a repetition? Is it not just being recycled? Everybody wants to sound like Asian, everybody wants to sound like Jeremy, everybody wants to sound like here. So, virtually, once you start, and I begin to hear, I feel late very much every year, so I lose interest in it. What is NBC doing to call? Can we just leave it at 26? Or once they bring the banner to go and you are broke, what can be done about this? Thank you very much. I'd like to, I'd like to react to the, to the last thing. And it is like it's a good development that the organization has been given. As a matter of fact, we don't even have enough. We don't have enough. So that tells me that operators have to be more creative in content development. We are talking about digitalization. By the time digitalization is the ground, we have more channels on each, on each station. So the bonus now lies on content producers. I tell my students, the time is coming when content providers are the king. Now, I haven't said that. There is this idealistic notion that people have about media. It is true that media, media have the power to transform society. But people also should know that you pay the pipe and the the tune. People should know that. If I set up a radio station, I am the owner. There are certain minimum requirements I need to adhere to in terms of standard. If I get the standard that NBC sets up, it's okay. That is okay. But if PCOS, you cannot say you want to you want to operate PCOS the way Splash does. You cannot. I, you cannot. So fair on me, if you think you are not okay with what PCOS is doing, the best you can do is to go and set up your own radio station. But for as long as you work on that, that in that medium. You have to abide by everything that is done. That is it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Questions have been asked and it's just okay. to the station. What are you doing 
to ensure that uh, the embassy do not create an impression of partiality amongst the station. So you do not have an impression that the embassy is just out for you and you alone. Thank you.
as much as you can, Nike, um, uh, sorry, BC Ulufadi, if you have 50 people from your station, let them come. The best you can do for them is to expose them to training. When you went to BCS2, you, you have been from NBC, I'm sure they are right. Yeah, so now you are your guy at the station. So you should do the same to, 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 your, to your staff. So every station at least should come with at least 50. This is um, Allah who was telling me that at least 50 will come from Splash. And like you, am I right? So the best we can do is to help ourselves, is to help our job. Let them come and be trained. Let them come and have the exposure. So by the time they, some people will be there and be talking. But the truth is, when you are there, what I, I will, once I do the welcome address, my own is to sit down and be taking notes. I'm also going there to learn. It is not about I'm a conveyor. No, no, no. It's about just me to welcome you and I pick my paper and bear and pen to write and jot and make sure that I add to my knowledge. So it is not about um, um, fun fair. It's about training and training. So please. Let's do, uh, let's give our, our, our work, sorry, let's give our staff uh, the opportunity to have, this is once in two years, another one will come 2021, am I right? So it's another two years before we can have this opportunity again. So please, let's have them come. Uh, talking about, uh, okay, the, uh, the second we'll talk about details of, of the event and the time and venue. Now, um, Babalala, number of attendants, uh, my brother, from the print media. Yes. At least, at every edition of NBC Emission Day, we have recorded nothing less than 1,500 attendants. Yes. You can come next, next Thursday and see what I'm saying. They come in batches. The first batch will be there filled to the corner of the hall, about 1,000 plus. Before you know it, some people will be coming and some will be standing and some will be hanging somewhere because they want to embrace knowledge, want to embrace um, what the professionals are actually giving them. So it's it's like that. Now, Fernand Babalala, have you tried to improve the code? Okay, this is coming from uh, someone uh, have you tried to improve the code to capture the, the evolution of social media? Is that for me? The, 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 the regulation of the uh, 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 evolution of the internet uh, director would do that. Yes, talking about, I want to sound like a uh, me, I want to sound like the uh, Olu, um, I want to sound like Tiki. It's our problem, and it's a great problem. You can never be too the Olau, you can never be a mission being. You are even limiting yourself to try to sound like me. Um, now let me just take you through this very short one. Um, it got to a point where I was tired and I got to that, you know, when it's elasticity, when you pull that elastic, it gets to this point of elasticity and it breaks. The limit. I was tired of, you know, tuning in and listening to my kind of presentation, my kind of voice, everywhere. And I was like, ah, you know what Continue something else, and I began so challenged anymore. Nobody's challenging me, and the, that's the Yoruba Entertainment Shisha program that, that I was doing for about 28 years. And everybody was and, and, and the mannerism, the diction, and it's from me back home. And it's me fair, open it, Baba fair. Hello, me too, Kira, Otun Lori, keep your mom, Lori. I was in Lori, yes, and I was listening to a station, a, a station Royal FM, and that presenter. Was sounding so much like me. Otun Lori Kimi, and part of my Oriki Oriki ya will be one. But Otun Kamurai. I mean, how gullible? I mean, I'm serious. That is the truth. I don't want to mention the name of the presenter. But he was using my Oriki and the Oriki of my wife, and he was even calling himself a wife. Eh? Oti be more. Yeah. I mean, that's how gullible. You know, it's you can you can have a mentor. There's nothing wrong. Joel Papa Valerie was my mentor. But at the point, you need to discover yourself. There's inherent ability. You have your talent too. Look, the way I can talk for, when I, when I can talk for 15 minutes without breathing, me, I can do it. Can you do it? As long as I'm talking for 15 minutes, I may not breathe. 
But do you have the best coding capacity that I have? Do you have the, 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 the voice modulation that I have? Do you have the kind of texture in my voice? The mannerism. I have my texture, I have my voice texture. You have yours. There's originality. Once you sound like Yemishon, they are limiting yourself. A lot of them do it. And at that point, I became so tired and I said, okay, let me give all these ones. Let me do something else. And that is why you're listening to Wise Life on Splash FM. Help me, let me just do something else. Because people are like, it's like everything, everything. This, this, that, that, that. Yemishon, Yemishon. Of course, it's good, but uh, we need to be original. We need to be more creative. Uh, it's not NBC that will now do something to make us great. It's our Lama, our creative for our. The more we do that, then look, if you have in Lagos, we have over 26, we have about 40 stations, am I right? In Lagos. Hello, there is no station in Lagos that beats Wasobia FM in terms of commercialization, in terms of uh, what's it called now? Uh, uh, Advance. Because of their content. They have they are, they are, they are, they are, they, they have their own reach, they have what they, they do, they have their kind of audience they talk to, they have their kind of programming. So, Wazobia is different from Villa FM. Villa FM is different from Radio Lagos. Radio Lagos is different from 5G FM. Fine, they are both producing Yoruba uh, programs. But in a different manner, they have their. So, it is about us. We should be more original. There's no way I can sound like Lele too or my Daniel It's not possible. The women can start talking like Lele Shitu and Mama Nemi because I'm a fast talker. I cannot go on Lele Shitu space. If Lele Shitu starts to talk like me, he will stumble. Because my own mannerism, that's, my, that's the way I'm wired. But there's, everybody has what you are, you know, your inherent ability, your inherent talent. You should actually encourage the younger ones coming. That's what I tell all of my, my trainees, all of them. I tell you, look, yeah, you can sound like me, but look, at the point you have to drop it. Discover yourself. Check what I do here, it's fine. This is the way you should do it. Benjamin never sounded like me. He's my first baby. He never. I mean, do what you, you are actually giving. Don't do what I have. If you have what I have, then do more. Later, my father told me that Yemi, you have something you you can never be told about Bale. Because Yemi only stole a bit of water. He has a deeper voice. And that's the way it was wired. That's the way it was created. My voice is not as thick, as deep as what it had. Peter um, of course, of this, or GBC had a very deep voice. You want to sound like <laughs> so why would you now leave your comfort zone and struggle? I mean, it's all about us, and we should know this. What is your strength? What is your weakness? We should do a thought analysis on ourselves, and it's not the problem of NBC. It is our own problem. Then Inca News Agency, Yoruba News Star, I think NBC will talk. I don't want to talk. I'm sorry. Let me just allow NBC to dwell on that. It's a big problem. And we all know it is a big problem. And when I, whenever I say something that relates to that on radio, I say it, I don't care. But uh, at the time I finish that program, I know the reactions of my colleagues. But I will not keep quiet. I will continue to say it. Some of them will even come and say, Offer can a meaning doctor, your mission on news. Doctor on news. A meaning allergy. Please don't let me take your time. We have a lot. But we know it ourselves. And I think it is high time we drop those things and be more conscious of our roles as professionals, as opinion holders in society. Thank you. Creativity is your ability to study your environment and look out 
and look out for some things that you can bring into the fold and, you know, garnish it with your words. Creativity. That brings out your originality, brings you out and you stand to you have your own outstanding quality. So it's a situation where broadcasters tend to emulate others. Like what I was just smiling within me when he when he said someone has to, you know, mimicking everything, even to the Oriki, and, and that, that is a terrible thing. Why? Because I want to be like him. Anyway, thank you so very much. Now to the questions that were directed to NBC. Uh, I think that Mr. Shito, if I may remember, he said something without any cause. Dogs don't bark. I like that. So in other words, don't bark for reason. And I believe that the dogs that is referring to NBC. Great. Yes. So NBC barks. And don't bark alone. Let me see bites and bites. Maybe the biting now will be more severe. Yes. It will be more severe. So NBC will do less of biting and more of biting. God helping us. Now, the issue of government, uh, media, and, and the private, you see, it shows one thing. When you go to the private station, they will tell you, why is it that you always look at us? We are the only ones you focus on. And you leave the government. They are doing all sorts of things. You, are, you go to government, they say, oh, we are just leaving the private. It shows one thing, that you are being effective. Both sides are feeling the impact of NPC. It's as clear as that. I got that vision, I mean, that class would be louder. Yeah. Yes, it shows that we are doing our job. If the government uh, uh, media houses are complaining and the private ones are complaining, it shows something that we are doing our job. So please, sir, just be professional and we will not uh, have cause to, to, to look at you and probably. <laughs> Make a chunk of your flesh. <laughs> I want to thank someone who wants the details of. Uh, uh, yes, the, the event is coming up on Thursday, 18th of um, this month. That will be next week, Thursday, at the um, Alumni Multiple Hall in UI. And the time is 10 a.m. from Thursday. Is that okay? Yes. Now, registration starts at 8 a.m. Okay. So I thank you very much. Now, um, I think someone here talked about uh, the government stations trying to twist the news and, and all that. So because of that, it is not right for the law, but it's not NBC now, the law to say um, uh, newscasters should not uh, uh, be involved in, in voicing but not only voicing, even appearance, we should not appear on, on TV. Yes, we should not appear in any commercial. We should not voice. Now, the issue is this. The twisting of the news, is it that, is it fact? When the news is twisted, is it fact? There is no more news. So that is not news. In other words, you are telling us that the government stations who twist news are not giving you news. And that takes me to the number of stations we are talking about here, that we have 26 radio stations. In fact, it's 28. We have more coming. Okay? More are still coming. There is, when you have competition, it brings out the best in you. Exactly. With competition, you can come up with the best. You have to be creative. You understand? You have to be creative. Your content will sell your station. When you have quality content, people will want to listen to you. But when you want to mimic uh, your vision day, and I just listen to him on one station, and I listen to your station and listening to the same voice, not knowing whether it's your vision day or I say, I just finished listening to your vision day. Let me go to another station. Hello, sir. I hope you are listening. Yes, sir. Yes. 
So I think it's very healthy to have more station. Don't look at the money. The money will come. Your content will bring money. Somebody in Lagos will just say, ah, there's this radio station that is giving us good content. Let's place our advert there. It's very, very possible. You understand? So please, uh, for that, I don't think there is any issue. Now, going back to the issue of voicing, I want to ask you a question. I know some of us here will remember the uh, issue of my picking. Can we, can we still recall that my picking issue? Now, you know that that was a teething drug meant for children, babies, and, you know, uh, supposing you as a newscaster now voiced my picking and said, This is very good for your children. Use it. A newscaster. Remember, news is factual, and we believe you. And mothers now start rushing for my picking. Only for two days after, babies start dying. That was what really happened. And babies start dying. What, what do you think your own conscience as a newscaster, what would be your own conscience? What would you be thinking? Have you done, have you done well to the society? One, you don't know the component of that my picking that you are endorsing. You don't know the content. So why should you put yourself into a drug that or to a into a product you know nothing about? And you say it's the best. You are not the producer. You are just paid. So you use your money to kill other people. Oh. In as much as we are here to inform to educate and to entertain, we should also take protectiveness of the citizens very, very importantly. So whatever we do, let's be conscious of our audience. They are alive. They are alive to listen to you. They are alive to watch you. But when everyone dies, who will you speak to? Who will you transmit to? So newscasters, you still carry the sacredness of that news. News is factual. News will remain factual. In as much as you are a newscaster, please stay away from voicing adverts. I think I have uh, probably answered the ones you have. Then the Yoruba issue, the Yoruba newspaper, is a battle that is still ongoing. Like I said here, yeah. By the grace of God, we shall win. Now, you are complaining. It shows that you don't like what you are hearing. Is that not so? So it is not NBC. But you, when you bring an independent presenter or I guess presenter to read newspaper headlines, what do you expect? When you don't allow the professionals to do what they need to do, what do you expect? Newspaper review, like the name goes, it's news. It must be taken seriously. So when you allow the independent presenters to come in and they call themselves different names, how they commonize it, they water the news by using all sorts of things, language and all that. And it's very common on the Yoruba. Why? Because we can play with language so well. Yoruba, you have the language, you come up with different analogies, you say all sorts of things. An accident happened somewhere, and so 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 number of people died. And somebody wants to present that. It must bring up issues that make you laugh. And now say 30 people were killed. Professionalism. So please, if NBC writes to your station, we're going to warn, we will warn your station. But after the warning, we're going to bite. And this biting is biting so hard and pulling out the flesh. 
I'm saying this that because we have to do the right thing. We have to protect our people. We have to be serious about our profession. We shouldn't just allow people to come in and, and, and rubbish this profession. Many people toil day and night to ensure that this profession remains at that peak. Then we allow other people to come in and just bring down all the toys of people. Well, no. The struggles of our heroes past shall never be in vain. The struggles of our heroes past shall never be in vain. And we should not allow the people now who just because of peanuts now bring down the struggle of our heroes past. NBC will not allow that. We will put our feet down and we will make sure that by the grace of God, all what you'll be hearing on our radio station and TV will be quality broadcasting, which is our motto. Your right to quality broadcasting. Thank you so very much. Excuse me, sir. You have not answered my own question. What was the question? About the advent of social media. Okay, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Thank you, thank you. The advent of social media, if um, there are rules. Yes, uh, maybe you have amended. I want to ask you, do you have a copy of the code? I have. You have? Yes. But there is a section that talks about user-generated content. User-generated content. NBC does not, does not regulate the social media. Rather, we regulate the broadcast media. Now, user-generated content, that is the citizen content. The content you can get from social media, we have a section there in the code that tells you what you shouldn't do. For instance, let me give you one. It says the broadcaster shall be held responsible for any breach of the code, irrespective of the source of your content. So irrespective, whether from social media, from anywhere, if it breaches the provision of the code, you shall be held responsible. Then we the, uh, I will read just um, the user-generated content that says, the broadcaster shall take cognizance of the new and emerging technologies which have made possible the development of user-generated content, provided such content meets all relevant provisions of the code. I think that should help. So thank you so much, sir. A round of applause for one more time. You will agree with me, ladies and gentlemen, that this is not just another press conference, but one that has created a platform for us to intellectually dissect the real issues in anticipation for what to expect next week Thursday. And I'm sure that uh, everyone of us present in this room will come out in our large numbers to be part of history next week, Thursday. At this point, we will not end this program without a vote of thanks from our official media partner. And to do that, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome to the microphone the general manager of Russians, Splash Lagilu Efer, Mr. Tunde Olawu, for the vote of thanks. Thank you very much. The Zulan Director of NBC, Mr. Rafael Department. Again, I join my colleagues welcoming you again to my welcome, sir, and the Chief Monitoring Officer and the Assistant the Chief Monitoring Officer. Thank you, Madam Chair Faris. It's a pleasure to see you again. I'll be convener of this. Mr. Yemichundi, the original of Alpha. Thank you so much for staying true. And to all of us, what we all to listen to this, what I would just say is that I would say uh, splash 105 and Biden and 6.7. And I believe also that it is a thing of responsibility uh, to partner with something this important. Uh, for our industry. And if you look at it, I'm sure you would agree that this is not a, 
the Generation Day event or the news event. That's why it's called the Media Stakeholders Forum. We are all stakeholders, so it is our event. Usually when we go for press conferences, uh, what you have is the organizers inviting us uh, to come. But in this instance, we, we own this event. So uh, we are essentially inviting ourselves. Uh, let's uh, come around next Thursday. It's going to be a huge, huge event. I'm particularly interested in the topic, uh, the, the convergence of social media and uh, legacy media. A lot of uh, evolution has happened. And it's an ongoing struggle trying to manage what is right and what is not right. Especially in this day and age when rating is everything. As much as we want to stay professional at the same time, we want to sell and we want to be at the top uh, so that advertisers can buy, so that audience can be key to what you do. So it's important for all of us uh, to be there to learn from the masters of this game the veterans, the regulators, the gurus, and uh, most of them are seated in this hall. So um, we look forward to having everybody on the ground and hopefully. By the time the whole event is over, the NBC and the Pluto will not have as much reason to, to fight. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, I wish you a safe journey back to your destination. Let's have a round of applause for you. Just before we rise for the benediction, it's just nice to inform you. Uh, you can be part of what is happening here by joining uh, social media platforms. Uh, check out for Wise Limited on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook you have um, the Emission Day Entertainment Limited. Please just find uh, a little time to check um, some of these activities on the social media space. And I can assure you that you will be impressed with what we are doing on this side. May we rise to share the grace together. Yeah. But the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen.